tonight's uh, message on um, about sanctification, uh, about reconciling our lives to God. And uh, I'd like to start out by reading Psalm 73, 25 through 28. The Bible says, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go abhorring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to represent you, Lord. Um, help us, Father, to clean up our flesh, that we may better represent you, Lord, to be good ambassadors. Um, and I just ask for your blessing upon this time of teaching, Lord. Give me the words to speak, Father. Keep me focused and help me with um, contain any pride that tries to swell up, Lord. Praise your holy name, Father. Thank you for going on that cross for us, Lord Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> to sanctify. Let's define the word. There's, there's uh, quite a few. There's eight different meaning um, definitions uh, according to Webster's, no Webster's 1828 dictionary. Uh, the first meaning, in a general sense, to cleanse, purify, or make holy. Make holy means to set apart. The second definition, to separate, set apart, or appoint a holy, sacred, or religious use. God blessed the seventh, the seventh, seventh day and sanctified it. Uh, third definition, to purify, to prepare for divine service and for partaking of holy things. Fourth is to separate, ordain, and appoint the work of redemption and the government of the church. Five, to cleanse from corruption, to purify from sin. This is ours, to make holy, be detaching the affections from the world and its defilements and exalting them to a supreme love to God. That's got, that's got to be us right there. Um, number six is to make the means of holiness, to render productive of holiness or piety. Seven, to make free from guilt. Eight, to secure from violation. And I, I'd like to say number five really hits me. And I believe this study is uh, focusing on number five, to cleanse from corruption, to purify from sin, to make holy be detaching the affections from the world and its defilements and exalting them to a supreme love to God. How do we sanctify ourselves? Um, the Bible says, John 17, 7, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So if we, we want to sanctify ourselves, we don't go to a church, we don't receive sacraments, we don't we don't go anywhere else but God's word. Praise the Lord for this authorized King James Bible. We can know that every single word is pure and it will sanctify our lives. And again, I, I tell you, it sanctified me. The moment I started reading this book and believing it, um, it radically changed my life. And I hope that we can all follow through and keep reading this book and let it change us for God's use. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. Um, context is about husbands, but there's some, it'll, it'll teach. Uh, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So water equals word here, by the word. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot, or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy without blemish and right now our flesh is full of blemishes wrinkles um, <clears throat> let's all let's try, try to be better um, church members and by doing that we need to get rid of some wrinkles let's uh there's nothing wrong with trying to be righteous it'll only help <clears throat> Don't be self-righteous. Righteousness so that God can use us so that me and Brother Josh can go out to Auburn and when someone sees us preaching, they don't say, oh man, look at all those wrinkles. That they can see 
God's word. Um, that can be all of us. Maybe another next time, Brother Andrew, we'll make it. <laughs> God's good, though. <clears throat> and um, 1 Peter 3.15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Another reason is sanctify ourselves. What happens when we sanctify ourselves? We'll be ready. Um, if I wasn't, if I hadn't sanctified my life, Brother Josh hadn't sanctified his life, any of you, if you don't sanctify your life, when your Zach comes up to you, are you going to be ready? Are you going to know what to say? Or is, a, is, a, is your life full of the flesh and worldliness too much that, so much that you, you don't have a great answer for someone? Be ready. First Thessalonians 5, 23. In the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whole spirit and soul and body. That's what God wants. This old flesh is corrupted, but um, we can sanctify it. Um, God desires a sanctified body. We can do it through God's word. Psalm 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Again, I saw that happen in my life. God's word cleansed me radically. And um, we still all have wrinkles that God's word can cleanse up. <clears throat> Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. So uh, when we hide God's word in our heart, when we memorize his word, it will help us abstain from youthful lusts, um, not give in to that old flesh. Put on that armor, the armor of God, get that sword of the spirit, hide it in you, so that flesh, you can crucify that flesh, put it down. <clears throat> in Romans 12, 1 through 2, <clears throat> I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, someone came in here right now and is going to kill us Christians. I'm sure, you know, in our minds, oh, I'll, I'll die for Christ. You know, Okay, that's good. What if, what if someone doesn't come in here and try to kill us? Why don't we just live for him? You know, I mean, we can, we can have that attitude every second of the day. Um, God wants a living sacrifice. He doesn't want you to die. Um, <clears throat> that old flesh pulls you down and wants you to sacrifice your time for it. Um, we all struggle with it. I'm, I'm struggling with it, too. Um, so what does God consider reasonable? Reasonable service to be a living sacrifice, acceptable, acceptable to God. That's reasonable. Um, I think we make it harder than it ought to be because we put so many things in our life. Um, some things may not be that, not, may not be bad, may not be wrong, but uh, God has given us uh, precious time. It's the it's the most valuable resource you have. You can't get it back. Once it's gone, it's gone. And you can't get any more. You can't buy it. How are we going to use that time? <clears throat> Think about this. Um, when you go to church, you're you're sacrificing your time to God. You're being a living sacrifice. When you go to prayer. Um, when you go to the nursing home, wherever, you're sacrificing your time to God. But I tell you that God wants us to be a continual living sacrifice. As soon as we leave church, do we die? As soon as we leave that nursing home, are we dead? No, we're still living. So I think God wants us to sacrifice that time too. <clears throat> so, um, Think about it. In church, when we're surrounded by people that love the Lord, um, who 
to know as well, it's easy. This is, going, this is for me too, it's easy to witness to someone. Um, I know when me and Brother Andrew and all of us go street preaching and door knocking, we're all bold. Uh, there's no reason not to be bold. That's why it's, it's, why it's, it's so good to always have fellowship, stay in fellowship with brethren. Um, and to find a wife that loves the Lord too. Amen. One day. But um, <clears throat> what happens when we're by ourselves? What happens when we're on our way to work by ourselves? We stop at Bojangles. Um, and the lady, the cashier, she needs to hear the gospel. There's, it, you, you know, we're all guilty of not doing it, but you think about it. How easy is it to say, here, would you like to read some good news? Sacrifice that five seconds our time or um, we're about to check out at, at, at Wally World how easy is it just to hand us a, a track um, sacrifice that couple of seconds that's reasonable you know what I mean God the God is like that's the easy stuff you know we can do that <clears throat> but we gotta have, we gotta be sanctified uh, to be ready to give an answer if we're not um, if we're not in God's word and prayed up when we get to that cashier, um, man, that old flesh is going to be overwhelming and say, oh, you know, just don't worry about this time. But what about what they'll think about you? You don't care what they think. But God says it's reasonable to be a living sacrifice. <clears throat> he wants to act, us to act like Christians when we are in church as well as we, when we're at work. God wants us to be holy when we are praying, just as we should be holy in our conversation when we're eating out. God wants us to sacrifice ourselves to studying his word as we should sacrifice ourselves to preaching the word to the lost cashier. <clears throat> are, we, are we just religious? Just show up and follow the formula? Or do we have that relationship with God, that pure relationship where he says, go witness to that person and just do it? Again, this is all pointing back to me too. It's not just y'all. Um, everything we're saying, I'm saying here, is for all of us. So we can be better church members and praise the Lord, brother Josh is here. He made it. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. <clears throat> Amen. God's good. It's not easy on that old flesh to make sacrifices outside of our basic Christian duties. Glory to God. Amen. Lord, I'd like to thank you that Brother Josh made it here safely, Lord. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Brother Josh, I'm just talking about um, sanctification. And uh, there's multiple, there's uh, eight definitions for it. And our definition is to cleanse from corruption, to purify from sin, to make holy, be detaching the affections from the world and its defilements and exalting them to a supreme love to God. We can do that. And how do we do that? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's reasonable. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, so you're caught up now. All right? It's not easy on that old flesh. Um, when, we're, when we're around people, it's easy to, to act like a Christian, which that's why God tells us not to forsake this assembly, because he knows that, that how powerful that flesh is. <clears throat> so uh, I'm thankful for everyone that can, faith, has been faithfully coming here. And for those that can't, you know, praise the Lord. At least they came. Um, let's pray for them that they can make it. <clears throat> you know, why do we why do we get so nervous when it comes time to hand a track? Five seconds of your time. You know, <laughs> the customer is always right. That's the saying in the business world. When you go through that drive through you say, hey, would you like to read about some good news? They, I've never, ever had anyone deny me. Because that would... You know, they probably worry about lawsuits or something or getting offending the customer. And yeah, I probably wouldn't go back just to teach them lessons. <laughs> but um, 
man, the old flesh, you got to put it down. Sanctify your life with right. the Lord so you can put that flesh down, put that whole armor of God on. Amen. So when the flesh attacks, yeah. you're not getting through. <clears throat> and um, Christ, you know, he, he literally died for us. Um, man, so we don't go to hell eternally. I mean, don't get excited or anything, but uh, I think I think it's worth handing that little track out, considering what he's done. When Peter was walking on that water, by faith he got out of that boat and he's walking on that water because all he's thinking about is the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you get your eyes off God's word, the Lord Jesus Christ, you sink. That old flesh will pull us down. And all we got to do is say, Lord, help me, and pull you right back up. Right. So there's no excuse Amen. for none of us. <clears throat> and, um, you know, the constant attack on me when I'm about to hand out a track is, oh, what will they think? Or what will they say? Or what, what does the world think about me? Right. Um, it's a good thing to be considered peculiar, right? Amen. Um, we, what, those thoughts, we want them to think that. That means God's like, okay, they think he's peculiar. He's following the, the theme of scripture. God's always called himself out a peculiar people and a holy nation. So, uh, care too much about the, what the world thinks about us. We don't want to stick out. We don't want to be peculiar to people. But the Bible says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So when we're about to hand out the track, if we have renewed our mind by God's word, transformed ourselves, we'll stop caring. <clears throat> that applies to me. I need to you know, get more God's word and let it transform me so that when I see these people, I'm not, I'm not afraid. I don't care what the flesh says. <clears throat> if we are right with God, who cares what the world thinks? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Stop thinking like a dead man. And start living for the Lord. That flesh right. is dead. Amen. I mean, our spirit's alive. Let's stop living like dead men. Let's be alive for the Lord. Living sacrifice. <clears throat> Think about it. That old flesh, when you get on fire for the Lord, it's going to start stinking. Right. That flesh is going to start stinking and trying to get you back to that, that lukewarm, um, that perfect 72 degrees. Um, it doesn't want to get cold, though, because the Lord will start giving you chills, making you suffer a little bit and get you back. But that flesh wants you to just take it easy. Don't sweat, but don't shiver at the same time. So why should we sanctify ourselves to be an ambassador? When a king sends ambassadors to a country, he expects them to act professional and to live for him right. while, they're, while, he's up, while they're over there. If, if that ambassador, while off work, he can be off work and go out to a bar and get drunk and get arrested, and he just misrepresented his king and might be um, called back. I mean, you think about it. How merciful is the Lord? Be, being ambassadors for him, we should all be called back. We're on this earth to be ambassadors, to represent the Lord Jesus Christ. How merciful is our God. Not only did he die for our sins on that cross, right. but after we get saved, he continues to be merciful to us, even being un unfaithful ambassadors. Proverbs 13, 17 says, A wicked messenger falls into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is help. Proverbs 25, 19, Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth. And a foot out of joint. <clears throat> hmm. The fruit of the righteous, Proverbs 11.30, is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Ephesians 6.20, for, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Ambassador in bonds. Hmm. 
Romans 10, 8, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. 2 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. <clears throat> what kind of message are you right now? None of us are at that perfect perfection, but um, where are we at right now? How many times have we delivered a message in the last week? That's why we're here. That's right. We're ambassadors to deliver a message to a foreign world. Or being faithful, but a faithful ambassador is health. Health. Think about it. Righteousness exalted the nation. Right. But sin is a reproach to any people. Um, I believe standing on that street corner will get the lost saved, plant seeds, but at the same time, righteousness exalted the nation. Right. You stand on that street corner, you're shining a light yes, into this dark world. We can't say anything. We can't complain about our community, about the, the troubles it's having, That's right. about anything. If we're not standing Amen. on that street corner, yes, sir. we have no excuse. <laughs> Being a faithful ambassador of our community will create a healthy community. And think about what, look at this country. Everyone has stepped down from their position as an ambassador and let, me, and let the other side fill that gap. Imagine if every Christian was being a faithful ambassador. This, this country's health would be good, but it's not. And um, confidence in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble, I say that we're in a time of trouble and a world full of trouble. Um, does God have confidence in you right now? Or are, are you unfaithful? Right. It says it's like a broken tooth. You yeah. put out a joint. I've never had a foot out of joint. Or I've even a broken tooth. Anyone here? No? Anyone want to volunteer? Maybe the... Um, okay, never mind. Anyone want to volunteer to have a broken tooth or put out a joint to see how, how it feels? Okay, well, I hope it never happens to anyone, but um, I imagine that that feels pretty bad. Right. <clears throat> and I tell you, looking at the state of the church, um, man, it, my tooth starts hurting. You know what I mean? Amen. Just Just passing by the mega Babel buildings, knowing that there's no righteousness there. Right. It, there might be salvation, maybe, but it's just, it's still the church so we can pay that mortgage, so we can keep the rock from coming. Man, I pass by those churches and I just feel my foot, man. It's like it goes out of joint. Amen. It hurts to see that, that kind yes, of sir. stuff. Knowing what the Bible says, it ought to hurt you to see unfaithful ambassadors, unfaithful men. <clears throat> and the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Another picture of good health. Um, are you being a, a, a tree of life in your community? <laughs> Think about it. So people can look and say, wow, look at that healthy fruit. You know, righteousness exalted the nation. He that winneth souls is wise. How wise are you? Right. Amen. If you're not wise enough, go to this word. Ask for wisdom. Right. God will tell you, go witness. Yes, sir. <laughs> If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. God will take. I'm telling you, when I started witnessing, it was when I got out of the army in 2012. Actually, right after in early 2013, I started going to college, and there was a good brother in the Lord, had a King James Bible, the only one in that whole college that had. A, well, probably I don't know, but faithfully went out and witnessed, and the Lord get the Lord will always give you the opportunity. He gave me that opportunity, and. I just thought upon what Jesus did for me, made it easier to go out with that brother. Right. And the more I went out with him, I'm telling you, at first I was like, Lord, you're just going to give me the words to speak because I don't know what to say. I know how I got saved, but I'm not ready for all these atheists and sodomites and reprobates and all that. Right. Um, but I'm telling you, when you go win souls, it, you will gain wisdom. Um, there's so many times where I didn't have an answer. And it really, it hurt me. And I went back and I got that answer. Right. Winning souls will make you wise. 
man, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Or start doing it. Um, <clears throat> where was I? We are ambassadors and bonds. We're bound to the Lord. We're set captivity captive. We're captive to sin. Now we're captive to the Lord. We're in bond to Him to be an ambassador. We can speak boldly knowing that we're on the winning side. Yes, and that God has given us the words to speak in this precious word. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. It's near. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Hey, the word of, word of life. That's right. It's in our mouth. There's no excuse. If we're sanctified, if our life is sanctified, we'll be ready to give that word to the lost. Right. To be a faithful ambassador. Yeah. Man, it's easy to do it in church. But if you ain't sanctified, think of the temple before you go into the Holy, Holy of Holies. After you go past that uh, the altar where they sacrifice all the animals, there's that labor. You wash up. There's the outer courts. Then there's the sacrifice. You're bloody after that sacrifice. But you got to wash up. There's a lot of outer, outer court Christians who don't want to wash their lives up, clean up. And then getting that Holy of Holies, you got to wash up first. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Hudson, for that. <clears throat> Anyways, um, here's a command. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, out of church, out of the nursing home, out of right. prayer. And reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. What kind of messenger are you? Are you wicked or faithful? Are you unfaithful or, or are you wise? No man can serve two masters. Being neutral is wicked. That's right. There is no in between with the Lord. Amen. Not for him, you are against him. Being lukewarm is repulsive to the Lord. So much so he would spew thee out of his mouth. Right. It's pretty gross. Yeah. You ever spewed something out of your mouth because it was gross? That's how God sees an unfaithful ambassador. Yes, sir. <clears throat> God wants you to be on fire for him. That all want flesh, remember, it'll start stinking um, when it gets hot, and will war with your spirit to get back to that lukewarm state. Right. It doesn't want to stink from the heat nor freeze from the cold. Where are you today? Are you just doing what the old flesh asks you to do? To go to church, you'll be all right. That's enough. Go to Wednesday night service. Oh man, you're on fire then. <laughs> Hey, um, in Exodus 20, it says, Six days shalt thou, thou labor. I know that's talking about work. But hey, if anything, take one day off. But I say God wants us to be a living sacrifice now. So we have his spirit indwelling us. We don't have to go to the Holy of Holies and the tabernacle. We have, we are the tabernacle. That's right. 24 7. Amen. We go to this word to get to get sanctified and cleaned up, and then we can go out and represent our Lord as a good yes, ambassador. Um, don't be a Catholic, my friend. Catholics, what do they do? Think about it. They receive um, remission of sins through eating a cookie. So they can go out. I'm serious. This is, you know, you have, some Catholics will tell you this, and you'll see. Stories about it, they'll, they'll say, you know, the night before Mass, I get wasted and do whatever I want because I know at Mass I'll get forgiveness for all those sins. They're trusting, they're trusting a cookie and some, and some wine. Man, don't, don't be a catabolic. Don't think that this year Sunday is what God expects. Right. He wants us to be a faithful ambassador. Ambassadors live like the devil, then go to their mass to receive forgiveness for all the sins they just committed. It's good to go to that altar, but we should have an altar at our house right. where we can get right and sanctify our lives. I got one at my house that I visit too often. I'm hoping to 
reduce those digits not because I don't want to talk to the Lord, but because I'm, my life's being sanctified. That's right. Amen. But um, <clears> 24-7. The flesh will suffer, though, when we sanctify our lives. Yes, sir. It's going to stink. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 12, Yea, and all that will of godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, I'm sure that's talking about from other people, but your flesh will persecute you. It's going to want you to stop that's right. living righteously. Philippians 3, 8, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. That knowledge is excellent. We should count it as loss, all things but loss. That old flesh, it wants you to be worldly. It wants you to go to the movies instead of going street preaching. It wants you to spend time watching TV instead of going out and hand out tracts or reading your Bible. Let's consider it as loss, all those things. All that stuff our old flesh wants, our old nature, if we just consider it as loss, it is going to be lost one day. If you're saved, you will go to the judgment seat of Christ. And all the time, every second you spend in the week there, it's going to burn up in the fire. Every second that was spent yelling for a team, it will burn up in the fire. Right. It's just the truth. Yes, sir. It's, gonna, it's lost anyways. Hey, <clears throat> let's be radical. Yes. 24-7. Be peculiar. But hey, God's grace is abundant. If you want to watch football, that's okay. Um, I prefer to be a little radical. Right. Because um, people like Brother Zach get saved and be radical. Amen. And that wasn't us. We didn't do this. No. God just put it in Brother Josh's heart and we went. Instead of, I guarantee you, <clears throat> if a football team was playing that night, um, there's still someone that needs to get saved on that, that corner at all. Are we not going to go because we're too busy indulging in loss? What's going to be loss? Hey, mm. stand, imagine standing before the Lord, judging the seat of Christ, and you see your whole life burn up in the fire because football was more important. Hey, let's be radical. All right. It'll be worth it in the end. Yeah. You'll look back at the speck of time that you spent on earth and be like, wow. So glad I watched football. It's gone now. I'm gonna miss that old thing. <laughs> or you could say, I'm so glad I went to that street. Right. Because right now I'm being rewarded for it. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Furthermore, 1 Corinthians 